finally arrived. The first flight for Halo Reach on PC. It was surprisingly well optimized considering all the factors that must have gone into translating a game designed for a very specific set of hardware and controller over to a wide range of computers and keyboard and mouse types. The first flight was pretty bare bones to be honest. No graphics options to speak of, and limited control customization, and absolutely no controller customization. Humorously, the game does seem to support PS4 controllers. I wonder if we can get them to straight up add PS4 button prompts. It would be pretty funny, but it would probably break reality. I ran through the test level once on easy before getting to work installing, you guessed it, Reshade. I even streamed my adventures in a really enjoyable hour and a half stream that if you can ignore the audio issues, was a blast to experience as my subscribers suggested ways for me to break reach. Did I have to like fool around to make it look less comedic? Yes, see now the image quality is starting to break down because the god rays are doing weird things. Whoa! No. No, somebody tell me this ain't happening. <laughs> the next day after that stream, I made sure to update Reshade since my version was outdated, and I was greeted with a host of even more impressive and flexible visual effects. On Twitter the previous day, I had posted that I was working on making the game prettier by upping the rather drab colors of the vanilla game, and people were surprisingly really upset at the prospect of me touching the game's presentation. Halo is known for its colors and beauty, so Reach never sat with me as Bungie steered it towards a more gritty and stereotypical Hollywood war movie aesthetic, with muted colors and lots of browns and grays. At first I was quite confused and defensive as I didn't like Reach's base look, but as the night went on and people explained to me that they felt making it look more lively and pretty would clash with the sound's tone, music, and presentation and create a disconnect, I understood the point and decided to go into Reach with a new mindset. A friend of mine and I rewatched Star Wars Rogue One, and while watching the movie I took notes on how the movie was able to make use of color while still maintaining a gritty presentation. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like Battlefield 1, and how that game is simply gorgeous despite being so gritty and war-torn. Going into Reach, I opened up my new reshade menu and got to work, my mind set on its new goal. The game and I can both have what we want. First things first, I brought up a tool that lets me manually adjust colors on the screen, such as being able to affect exclusively portions of the screen on the yellow side of the color spectrum. I upped the saturation of blue and teal so that my UNSC tech had their displays pop as well as the sky above me. I then began to slowly bump up colors such as orange and yellow to help highlight the warm haze of the setting sun in the distance. Things were starting to come together. It was much more colorful, but in the right places. Work still needed to be done, though, on getting that more gritty look into the picture. I threw some ambient occlusion in there. Reach already has ambient occlusion, but I found that the reshade version tended to help shadows feel a little bit more depthful. Reach kind of used a last-gen ambient occlusion effect, and it looks kind of eh. Something I was really happy with was the depth haze and what it did to the image. It made some things far off in the distance slightly fuzzy and added this warm, almost pinkish glow when I tuned the haze effect to look like the sun casting light through subtle dust clouds hanging over the evening battlefield. I remembered the way that the mission starts is Noble Six crashing, so I wanted to reflect that a bit by messing up his helmet. I added a bloom effect and visor imperfections such as smudges and scratches that reacted to light. I did flirt briefly with the idea of having the visor slightly fuzzy and glitch out, but that was honestly a bit much. The cuts and dirt did the job just fine. It looked like Noble's helmet took a beating in the crash and further added to the increasingly claustrophobic war atmosphere that I was building. I further enhanced this by messing with the darkness levels to make shadows more aggressive for a filmic look. I even experimented later on with a depth of field effect to make my gun out of focus. In the CE video, you all suggested that I place it on the hand and the gun instead of in the distance, so I did just that and I found it to look really cool, but be pretty inconsistent. I'm sure if I had more time, I could have gotten it working perfectly, but I was just too frustrated with the inconsistencies, so I just disabled it. 
I added a fake motion blur effect and tuned it as best as I could to imitate per object motion blur, threw in some film grain to enhance the war film aesthetic, and done. I was personally quite happy with how Reach ended up. It was both colorful and gritty in a way that I found quite beautiful. Did it make for a flawlessly readable battlefield? No. But what I was going for was not something that made for excellent gameplay, but for something that was more immersive. I even upped the bass on my subwoofers so that my floor rumbled with each gunshot and explosion. I was really connecting with Reach, a game that I used to think not very highly of in the Halo series. me excited to play the other levels, because I'm sure I'll need to tune my settings by a level per level basis. What works in this level will not work in something like New Alexandria, which has a completely different tone and atmosphere. To relax a bit after my masterpiece was complete, I messed around with some settings, centered the crosshair, and tried to emulate a Borderlands look, since the dry desert setting would have looked cool with it. And it was pretty cool just to see how well Reach fit into that art style when using Covenant or wacky looking guns. Control 2 Lima 4, permission to commence bombing run. Heading 224.6, over. At the end of the day, the true beauty of goofing off with reshader mods is the ways that you can either enhance a game's presentation or go in a completely different direction and construct something entirely new. Playing with Reach's visual look in this way gave me a greater level of appreciation for the send-off to their run with Halo that Bungie had created. I grew to actually appreciate the work that must have went into taking the rather goofy and colorful Halo series and making it look so war-torn, gritty, and serious. Hopefully the success of this test flight means that a more public flight will be on the horizon and even more people will be able to play. I'm even excited for the Xbox One players since they're going to be experiencing this game in HD and 60 frames per second, which was never done on console with this game. I have a feeling this is going to be a really good summer for Halo, and I can't wait to enjoy it. There's a mining facility near your location. Covenant are using it as a command outpost. Troopers on site have already engaged. 